warning, warning. Okay, I'm going to warn you right now. This is an instructional video. It's uh, a walkthrough of diagnosing the PO351 to PO360 codes for your ignition coil primary side, uh, which is very common on the Fords. And it's usually a wiring problem. So you're going to have to go through all these steps on here and really go through it and make sure that it's not the PCM or it is the PCM. So it is very dry, but if you have this problem, it's worth its weight in gold. Alright guys, welcome back to the shop. Uh, today, we're going to be going over diagnosing uh, coil primary circuit codes. Uh, examples are PO351 through PO360. Okay, so if you're getting one of these codes, you need to identify which one of the cylinders it corresponds to. So at 351 would be cylinder 1, and then 353, like we're having a problem with on this one, would be cylinder 3. And the four cylinders on Fords, it all goes from the left to the right. So it'd be one, two, three, and four. So it's very simple. And even the uh, the V8 engines and the V6 engines are very simple. They go front to back uh, in order. So it's very simple on the Fords for sure. So the first thing we want to do is check for a constant power to the ignition coil that we're having a problem with. And this is cylinder three. This is one we're having a problem with. So you have the key on to the on position and then you disconnect your coil, okay? And it's a regular two-prong uh, coil type system. This is not applied to the three terminal coil on plugs, and those are found in the, I believe it's 2011 or 2012 and newer Fords. They got an additional ground and uh, they're a little bit different uh, to diagnose. So we'll be concentrating on the two-prong ones that um, are found in all coil on plug systems on Fords back to from now until back when they started. So the first thing we want to do is check for that constant power and we're gonna have our test light connected to the battery negative and then we're gonna test each one of these pins. Now in case you don't know which one of these pins are on here you can either test either one and be quick about it or if you are um, you want to know which one for sure so you can concentrate on because you are not getting a power pulse um, what you can do is look at the rest of the ignition coils on here. They all share the same fuse, the same constant hot power. It's spliced off to all of them and a couple other engine sensors also. And uh, they're all going to have the same color. So you have a common color from all of these uh, on one of the terminals. And then the other terminal is going to be a different color for each one of these. And that's the control side that actually pulses from the PCM. Okay, so we identified that the violet colored wire is common to all the coils, and that one should have power on it. So we're going to test that one. And I like to use a test light over a multimeter because it provides some kind of load to it, whereas a multimeter can be misleading uh, a lot of the time. So I use a, a test light with an incandescent bulb, preferably a non power test light, and that will give you a, a good reading that I can draw amperage on here, and the circuit can handle it. Okay, so that side is just fine on there. Alright, since we know our positive side, our constant power is just fine, we need to jump over to the ground pulse side. And that should be getting a, a pulse, a quick pulse from the PCM, a ground pulse, to turn that uh, ignition coil on. So we're going to move, move over to that side. There's only two terminals, so we can't really mess this up. And then we're going to take our test light clamp side and we're going to move it over to the battery, battery positive. Okay. And then just to make sure we have good connection to both those battery terminals, we are going to take the probe side here. We're going to touch the negative to make sure our test light's okay, and it is. At that point, we can come over here, connect it back up to the test light here. Make sure all your wires and everything is clear from the actual drive belts and the fans. They might kick on and all that stuff. And then we can go over to the vehicle and we can start the vehicle and we should see a pulse. And I'll start it and I'll let you uh, watch it. Now it's a good idea if you have a um, misfiring cylinder like this, especially since now it's definitely a misfire, you want to dump in all that fuel in there and then it goes into the cat and everything else. So on this one it's easy. We're going to disable the fuel injector too for that particular cylinder and we are going to not let it dump fuel down that cylinder. It's just going to be basically an air pump at this point for our testing purposes. But this 
will all still pulse and you'll see it once I start it. As you may have noticed, the actual pulse on that uh, test light was very, very weak. And um, sometimes they won't light at all, depending on the impedance of the actual uh, test light in there, and how much amperage it's actually going to pull. So the best, best option uh, over a test light or a, um, a multimeter to test this ground side is to get an actual noid light. And they're used for the fuel injectors mainly. And this one for the GM PFIs uh, fits our fuel injectors just fine, our, our connectors for them. Goes right in there. But luckily on Fords, it also fits the ignition coil uh, primary connector on here. So it doesn't matter which way it goes, whichever way fully inserts, and this is how mine fully inserts. Um, it's just, it's just a light bulb inside of there. And we're going to put that on there, and then we're going to start the car, and we'll definitely see a good indication on here for sure with a Noid light um, to see if we're getting that ground pulse. So I'll go ahead and start it, and you'll be able to see it. And that means we're getting that ground pulse from the PCM. So in essence, that is what we're looking for, is the actual ground pulse and the positive to drive a load, which is the coil. So if all that passes, your noise light flashes, everything looks great, the next thing I want to do is check the actual um, resistance of this coil. And there's two terminals right here, just like these ones, and uh, we're going to, it, it depends on the vehicle um, for resistance values, but you'll know if you have an open circuit or not. So uh, if you need to have any uh, specs on that, I'll try to find them the best I can, but they are different for all the vehicles and different coil types and all that. Um, so if you are not getting the pulse, which most of you probably are not, and that's why you have these codes in the first place, the PCMs generally do not fry out on the Fords. Now there was a problem for a while with the Fusions and the, uh, um, the Escapes for a couple of years, with the 3.0 liter, them having problems with the um, actual uh, ignition drivers inside of the actual PCM. They actually uh, drive each individual one of these, and they were failing, and they were causing those exact codes. So besides that, um, there, there, there isn't really many PCM failures out there to speak of. So the next thing you want to do is check the actual wiring between the... Um, coil here from this connector over to the actual PCM wires up here. Now this one's very easy to get to but a lot of them are um, they're buried under the dash or in the foot wells, the kick panels on the passenger side, uh, places like that but this one is very very easy to get to which is nice and a lot of the newer Fords they're putting them somewhere in the engine compartment. Um, some of them are under the actual wiper cowl here so uh, it's, it's just uh, depends on your model and year. Okay, so if you're not getting the power, go ahead and look at the other coils and do the same test and make sure they're getting the power. If they are, you simply need to trace it back to the harness to where the splice is at that feeds all of these out. Now, as far as the ground side, the pulse side from the PCM, we're going to disconnect, we're going to have the key off, we're going to disconnect the PCM connector, and then we are going to first off, Make sure you're in the right pin, okay? And we're going to test it to make sure that there's no um, ground, a constant ground or a constant uh, power coming into it from some source. So right now the circuit has nothing else on it because between here and the PCM, it's a nonstop uh, you know, shot. There's no splices, nothing on the ground side. It's literally a ground pulse control side just for this coil. So you got to remember that. So there should be nothing on here if the PCM connector is disconnected. So we got disconnected. We're going to check for power. There should be no power and there should be no ground on there also because nothing is connected at this point. After that, that all checks out. We're going to take one end of the multimeter here and then we're going to take the other end over to the actual PCM connector. 
hopefully be able to see that. And then you're gonna find which pin it is on here. And these are very small pins in the new PCMs. Um, you have to use that paper clip again. Find out which one of these pins are it is on here, and it's again model and year uh, specific. And you're gonna test for continuity, which is the ohm scale on here. And you should have perfect continuity, um, preferably something around uh, five ohms or less. I like to see three ohms or less personally, and if I see anything above two, I'm getting a little worried. Most of the time, it's just like this. Oh, you can see it. It's around 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.5. That is the usual um, when it tests the resistance through a circuit like that. Now, if you're not getting that continuity like that below, I, personally, I would say below 2 ohms. Um, if you're not getting that, then you need to start opening up the harness or inspecting the harness between the actual coil here and the PCM harness up here. Now, if after all that, everything is passing and we're getting a constant power to our coil, we are, we have continuity between the coil and the PCM, um, there's no weird grounds or constant powers uh, on, the, on the control side for the, the coil, and we're not getting that nice ground pulse to turn it on and off, we're going to be looking at a PCM at that point. Um, it's like I said, it's not that common, so you may want to check over your work one more time. You can also do the same thing on another coil that you know is working properly. Now the thing that actually controls when to fire each one of these coils is the crank signal. The crank signal is fed to the PCM and it knows based on the crank position when to fire each one of these coils. So we know the crank signal is getting to the PCM because we don't have any uh, crank signal uh, DTCs, no codes for that. And what's more important is that the rest of these coils that are all using the same crank signal are firing just fine. Uh, whereas the cam sensor is used more for fuel injection uh, timing. So again, if you want to double check, I would double check on your work. And I would double check on another coil uh, circuit that you know is working just fine. Just fine. I think it's working just fine. Don't try to go swapping side to side and seeing if it works all of a sudden. That's not going to be good. Um, you're going to get a lot of spark knock and, and uh, misfires, and it could potentially damage your engine. Don't try to do that. Um, like I said, there's only a few years on the, on the fusions and the escapes that they had actual problems uh, with that. And then uh, later on, they had the same problem. I think it was just in the fusions, maybe it was the escapes also, um, where they actually were sticking on. They weren't, um, like the old ones, they would not fire at all. Whereas the, the newer escapes and fusions, they had a problem with PCMs also, where they would uh, stay on, so then they would heat up the actual coil in there, and they would crack, and there'd be all kinds of misfires from that, and the swelling of the coil, I had a couple of those, and those were on the newer fusions, uh, especially. But besides that, you really don't see any kind of uh, PCM concerns for the drivers and any other models or years um, consistently for uh, primary circuit codes. So hopefully this was thorough enough and this can be used as a guide in case you are having those codes. I mean it's that simple and this applies to just about every model on the Fords like I said that have the two terminal uh, coil unplug type system. They're all exactly the same.